Never drew my blood, never tested my testosterone. I just uh, kind of just managed it on my own. Well, what was the first world record that you hit? Well, I don't count like a Wabdul. No, the one that, the main one. 800. 800. That's the one I, well, I tied Anthony Clark's record, um, according to Herb Glossenbrenner. I think it was 785. He was legitimately, or 784. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what, I don't know what I did. 800's the one I, yeah. You know, you know Scott Middleton runs around. I got 72 world records, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I got eight, the 800 and the 1075 was a world record. So I had those. What was your weight at that time? For the 800? Yeah. 295. 295. So when did you realize, or when did you think that you had to push your weight up higher? <sighs> well, uh, weight moves weight, you yes. know, and I knew um, my, genetically my mom and dad are big bone fat people. And I knew that I could probably get get up and wait and, and do some, well, because I'm six at the time before my discs started shrinking. I was like six three, look at the yeah. gigantic bench stroke. Yeah. I'm not 5'10 with, you know, in a, with a barrel chest. So I got to get my boiler, you know, mm -hmm. 49 inches or whatever. And um, I remember Mendelssohn told me once to have um, four 2,500 calorie shakes a day in between four solid meals, mm -hmm. you know, and um, at the time How I was- How do you do that? Well, I did, didn't. I was sponsored yeah. by a supplement company called Bob O'Leary Supplements. He was a distributor for anything, everything I ever yeah. wanted. And I would order so much stuff, it, was, it wasn't even funny. But I ordered the 2,500 calorie shakes, and I tried to mix them with whole milk, ice, and it, and in the blender, it just turned into a blizzard. Yeah. It was a spoon-eating thing. And I was like, I can't do this. So I got the 1,875 calorie shakes, started mixing those with water and, and fat-free milk, and I was able to start getting those down. And then it was in 2007, which was a really weird year because there was a lot of um, Canelli must have found a new drug or something because I started the year in 2007 at the Fit Expo, Mendelssohn's Fit Expo, with a 903 bench, weighing 315 at the time, I think. Okay. Then I went to the Arnold a month later and I opened with 903 because Kara Bohegan said I couldn't do it and it didn't count unless she only did it at the Arnold. So that I make sure I opened with 903 there just to stick it to her, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit. And um, after that, I came home. I did an APF meet, Brent Mike Sell. I don't know if you ever mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. name. Oh, yeah. Up in Spokane. This was about in uh, April. And on the way to that meet, I'm carrying my bag and I'm practically dying. And this old timer named Skip Sandberg, who's from my town, uh, I was sitting next to him. I'm going, man, I'm tired all the time. And he's like, you have sleep apnea. I go, well, what's that? And he explained it to me. And at the time, I had a, a really cool doctor uh, where I lived, it, type of doctor where you could go in. And the typical thing was I wasn't a pain pill addict, but I was like, I want to try hydrocodone. Mm -hmm. He'd write me a script. I want to try Valium. Write me a script. I want to try growth hormone. Okay, well, you got to meet me at the, the, uh, the movie theater parking lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I went in there and I said, I need a CPAP machine. He's like, oh, well, you, know, that's, you need a, a sleep study that's 2000? I go, no. I said, just write on a prescription, I need a CPAP. He goes, what do you mean? Pulls out his prescription pad, writes CPAP machine, rips it off. I fax it to CPAP.com and I got a CPAP machine. Mm -hmm. uh, got it home, didn't know how to hook it up or anything, took it to a place called Lincare. They set it up, set the pressure. I went home. Um, I don't want the story to drag too long. Mm -hmm. But the first night I wore it for like two hours, ripped it off my face. How yeah. long did it take to get used to it? Three totally. days. Three Second, only three days. Three days. Second night, I, I, I had it on for I don't know how long, but then it was on the floor. The third night, I slept 12 or 13 hours. I went to bed at 11, and I woke up like at 11 or 12 the next day. And I'll never forget the dream I had. Because at the time, when you have sleep apnea, you don't get in REM state sleep, so you don't dream. Yeah. I had the coolest dream about my truck. It could fly through the air. And I woke up, and I was, I was weirded out because I, I didn't know what time I went to bed. I was like, we're, it was weirded out. Long yeah. story short. Um, so when the truck's flying through the air, did you go to Jack in the Box? No. <laughs> and I don't really go to Jack in the Box anymore. <laughs> I try not to interact with people as big as I am, I mean, in society. We live in a judgmental society. I'm getting off on a different yeah. tangent now. Keep going, keep going. Keep okay, going. which one? The um, CPAP. CPAP. So, okay, so long story short, um, it was like Memorial Day weekend, and me and my sister never get along. And they came up, her, my mom and her came up for Memorial Weekend, and we got along. Like, I'm in a good mood now. Like, why am I in a good mood? Well, I'm getting sleep. <laughs> so, and then I noticed quickly, too, that I was, I would walk around town, 
I don't mean to be like a bully guy, but in my little town, I, I would, I'd, you know, you're 315 or whatever, and I wear a spaghetti mm -hmm. uh, strap uh, tank top, and I walk into places, and I say, uh, like Burger King, number two, large fry, large Diet Coke, employee discount, and I get it. Mm -hmm. they don't, I, I just say, I work the one in Spokane, and I was getting, like, employee discounts everywhere I went. Um, so I, I quickly realized that before, when I had sleep apnea, I could only eat half a sandwich or half a foot long. Mm -hmm. And then about a week into this uh, CPAP machine, I was putting away a whole sandwich and wanting more. Okay, so I'm like, okay, something's going on here. About three weeks into it, I went back to Lincare that set up the machine, and I'm like, I'm a whole different person. I'm in a good mood. I'm eating more. And so they pulled the chip out of my machine and did a diagnosis mm -hmm. on it and figure out how much sleep I was getting. And they came back with the readings, and they go, you're not going to believe this, Ryan. And I go, what? And he goes, uh, you're averaging tw uh, 10 to 13 hours of sleep a night for the past three weeks. And I go, I know. I go to bed at 9. I wake up at 11 the next day. And, and it was, and then of course that leveled out eventually now, you know, I get mm. eight, eight or nine or whatever now, but at the time I was, and, and then it started taking off the body weight. Um, now the ca high calorie shakes and the food, it was just, it was, it was like 315, 330, 345. I got up to 352 and my handoff guy at the time looked at me and he goes, Johnny Perry, <laughs> strong man who died at mm -hmm, 400. Mm -hmm. So I quit squatting. Because I, I remember I was uh, still squatting at the time, and I didn't know where the weight was. I, it just wouldn't stop. And at the time, yeah. at the gym I was training at, it was one of those doctor scales with both weights on them. Yep. So I moved all the way over to 300 and all the way over to 350, and there was still about an inch and a half of room with that lower one, 352, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was still pegged. So I don't know how I, – I, I couldn't weigh myself. Actually, there was like a, a cattle – gigantic yeah, yeah. one at the feed store. I would go over there, but I don't know how accurate that was. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, I got up to 363 was my biggest. Okay. And um, that uh, probably could have gone further, but at the time it was just a, a perfect weight. I, my stomach was huge and I didn't, I, I didn't have much bar travel, so I could work with that. Well, so. you're able to recover, you know, sleeping helps, REM sleep, right? yeah. yeah so well, everything worked better. Yeah. Supplementation worked better. Everything just came together. Because well, like I said, I started the year with a 903 bench. I ended that December with 1050. Yeah. So people look at that year and they're like, well, how did he go 902 to 1050? Well, he went, he got in the phenom. No, no, there's more to it. No, he's, he's, he's claiming CPAP. It's, I think he's bullshitting us. He's so. During this whole time, with all this stuff that were you doing did with this doctor that you had did you ever have your labs done no <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even test my blood pressure this was a cool doctor <laughs> i just walk in there and we just chat i was like uh, oh i can't sleep what do you got what do you, oh, we hear some valium you know, you know doctor i've never tried oxycontin what's that like how many do you want this was back when I never drew my blood never tested my testosterone i just uh, kind of just managed it on my own so you never thought to test it no, I mean, right. looking back on it, you know, now that I know that um, taking um, hormone replacement or synthetic male hormone derivatives mm -hmm. raises your red blood cell count, and that thickens your blood somewhat. So now every three months I do uh, bloodletting. Mm -hmm. I do I do my own bloodletting. So you do your own? Yes. Yeah, well, sixteen gauge needle. It's like a fucking McDonald's straw. And how'd you learn how to do that? Uh, I watched my sister do it. Cause she's a phlebotomist, and then I figure I just do it like a like a heroin addict. I, I take a mini band, your elite fitness mini band, wrap it around, and yeah. I hit that one right there. It's yeah. Still shaved. It's just it's still shaved from three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And how much do you pull? Seven hundred fifty ml. Okay. Yeah, five hundred is what what they do at a blood bank. I pulled a thousand once, and I was completely flat for like a week, like. It just felt like the barbell was sitting on bones in my hand. It, it just, about 750 is a happy medium. And if I had it my way and you were still able to order like a lactated ringer or sodium chloride IV, yeah. I'd put the IV back in and um, put the fluids back in that way. But you can't get IV fluids anywhere. Mm -hmm. so you can go to these um, clinics and they have these cocktails with vitamins and shit in them. I want this, I want the sodium chloride and, uh, and, and uh, lactated ringer combo.